Um, so here you have uh, a map that shows the localities where they have been found in the in the late Triassic, and you can see how there is like a large range of sizes and stances. And for instance, the the, the neck morphology and the tail morphology is, is it's different from all of them. So when you're dealing with these kind of groups, you go uh, from studying really teeny tiny things to study really massive ones. So it becomes really difficult to uh, manage, st is develop strategies to score characters on them. So as you know, um, if you have heard me before, uh, basically the problem is that there is two main hypotheses on how they evolve. One says that we have a core group of prosauropods, and then we have the sauropods, all of them with a common ancestor. Some of the classically referred prosauropods belong to the sauropod group. And the other hypothesis that said that uh, you have a great like arrangement from basal sauriskins all the way to sauropods. What is interesting is that up to 2011, they were used, the, the matrices were being used simultaneously, and then people added both taxa to bo uh, the same taxa to to the to both matrices until 2014 when they argued that because this was the, mo the more complete one or with the largest tax sampling they will st they will keep using it so i'm going to just show using 921 character statements that are all discrete uh, i got a different arrangement so it's basically smaller groups of basal sauropodomorphs and one thing that you, I had to start doing is basically operationalize all of the discrete characters. And I did that using three different approaches. One was anatomical standardization. The second one was information theory to assess redundancy in a more logical way, considering characters a source of information. And then topology, which is a branch of geometry that deals with the inherent properties of all of the, of any geometric body. Uh, so I keep forgetting which one is, yeah. So the first thing that it's uh, consistent is that the small bipedal gracile forms are at the base of the tree. Then you have a different arrangement of bipedal animals and quadrupedal animals nested within their own uh, smaller clades. And what it's interesting is that then you get bipedal forms alternating with quadrupedal forms until you get to the sauropods where you have bipedal forms at the base of the tree and then quadrupedal forms at the base of the tree. So it means that quadrupedality is something that originated multiple times throughout the evolution of basal sauropodomorphs. So the gradient topology, it's still supported, but it's not as simple as that. There is no bipedal to quadrupedals only in one time. But this is only using discrete characters. The second part is when we got to the point when you have uh, things that could be treated as continuous. So here I have an example of a character where the disagreements were based only on how you were interpreting the character and not on the specimens you were assessing. So for instance, that character says that the shape of the snout is either V-shaped or U-shaped. So a U and a V, you can define them in two different ways. A U has a curve and the V has a vertex. Or a U has two parallel sides and the V has two uh, perpendicular sides or intersecting sides. So you have, for instance, in, in prosauropods, depending on how you interpret this character, either as a sort of parallel lamina in the, in the maxilla or a rounded snout versus a pointed snout, you will have disagreements on the scores you give to the same taxa. So you could go for one solution that it's converting this character into a continuous one and said how much it is U-shaped or how much it is B-shaped. But instead of, and <clears throat> you have to bear in mind that although all Continuous characters could be discretized. Uh, not all discrete characters can be presented in a logical continuous form. So one thing that I started doing was to separate continuous characters from discrete characters. And I found that only when you use continuous characters, uh, join ma uh, if you, I joined the two matrices, and I tested the, discrete topo the topologies produced from the discrete characters with the continuous one. And what I found is that the continuous one that produces different smaller groups, it's only uh, compatible with the continuous characters only. So like you can get discrete topologies from a matrix with continuous characters only. 
So there, uh, it was worth looking at the possible artifact. So in here you have a, continuous char a discrete character made continuous, which is distal expansion of the scapula, defined just as a ratio in the scapula. And this is just a, f a small amount of, of taxa so that it doesn't look that crowded. And as you can see, uh, you can discretize this continuous character in, the, in different ways. Either you do an average, so you check which one is the average of your sample, and the other one is by gap coding. So it's basically you organize from smaller to larger the logarithmic ratios, and then you count where every two standard deviation there is a gap. Um, the problem with doing this uh, with gap coding is, as you can see, as you increase the number of taxa, the gap coding is going to produce different characters. So it becomes a dynamic character. Every time you add a new taxa, you have to reassess the gap coding for that particular character. Whereas the average one, when you use average coding, the adding of new taxa doesn't affect much the limit you are putting into the discretization of your continuous character. So then, I, I collected all of the continuous data set from uh, 72 sp uh, species of basal sauropodomorphs, and this is just characters that come from the ilium, and then I basically checked for correlations between them, and I managed to get rid of, in this case, comparing five, uh, comparing six, uh, six characters, two of them are correlating with other characters. But what is interesting is sometimes the problematic characters are actually correlating with more characters. It's not just one character correlating with another one. So one character is actually containing information that is related to other, uh, a, a myriad of characters. And the regions where I have more, um, more of these cases of getting rid of characters from, are from the scapula, the ilium, and the femur, which contain much of the synapomorphies of basal sauropodomorphs. So then I run, I, I run some analysis having a discrete matrix with a discretized, uh, discretized, continuous uh, discretized continuous character matrix using gap coding. And what I found is that the resolution in, in every clade that I showed before it gets reduced and the stratigraphic fit is lower. Then using average, uh, the stratigraphic fit is even worse. Um, the resolution decreases in all of the in all of the clades, and when you use the continuous characters as such as continuous measurements or as continuous data, uh, what you get is that the overall topology of 927 characters doesn't get affected, and the stratigraphic peak doesn't reduces, neither it increases. So they are not probably the noise they could be introducing is not as much as with the other techniques of discretizing characters. So the conclusions that I got from this is that first, uh, if you use continuous characters as continuous data, uh, they do not seem to affect that much, or they do not seem to introduce that much noise in basal sauropodomorph. I'm going to stress that because I didn't test any of these hypotheses in any other group. So in this case, for basal sauropodomorphs, uh, the best uh, performing ones were continuous characters. Gap coding does produce uh, a similar the stratigraphic feed to the continuous one, but the problem that I found with that is that it, it generates dynamic coding, which is every time I add a new basal sauropodomorph, because the, the differences between the measurements is not that large. Every time you add a new one, that could affect the way you're coding the character. Then the average coding resolves the problem of having a dynamic character. You do not have to change every time you add a new taxa. A new, uh, you add a new taxon, but what you do have to do is that it decreases the stratigraphic fit of your topology. So it's probably introducing a lot more noise. Um, I think this is the more important part because it's really complicated to deal with continuous characters. It will be nice to start operationalizing the discrete ones and assessing how much you really need to use the continuous characters so that the continuous characters that you are dealing with are actually things that there is no other way to give around to it. So for instance, instead of converting the example of this node character into a continuous entity, you can start to operationalize it so that probably you treat it as two different characters with parallel maxilla or uh, pointed snout, or uh, yeah, you find another way to, to represent that information before actually treating it as a continuous character. So 
this led with 927 characters, uh, discrete characters, and 80 continuous characters. So that reduced the amount of characters, of continuous characters that I had to deal with. And that's pretty much my presentation for this time. And I just want to mention that all of the PhD project was funded by the National Council of Science and Technology in Mexico. And yeah, so they are the main contributors of me being here presenting this research to you. Thank you very much.